means it must begin by understanding the threat we face and why we face it. What we're fighting in Islamist extremism is an ideology. It's an extreme doctrine. And like any extreme doctrine, it is subversive. But you don't have to support violence to subscribe to certain intolerant ideas which create a climate in which extremists can flourish. Ideas also based on conspiracy, that Jews exercise malevolent power, or that Western powers in concert with Israel are deliberately humiliating Muslims because they aim to destroy Islam. In this warped worldview, such conclusions are reached. That 9-11 was actually inspired by Mossad to provoke the invasion of Afghanistan. No one becomes a terrorist from a standing start. It starts with a process of radicalization. When you look in detail at the backgrounds of those convicted of terrorist offenses, it's clear that many of them were first influenced by what some would call nonviolent extremists. It may begin with hearing about the so-called Jewish conspiracy and then develop into hostility to the West and fundamental liberal values before finally becoming a cultish attachment to death. Put another way, the extremist worldview is the gateway and then violence is the ultimate destination. A key part of our strategy must be to tackle both parts of the creed, the violent and the non-violent. This means confronting groups and organizations that may not advocate violence, but which do promote other parts of the extremist narrative. We've got to show that if you say, yes, I condemn terror, but the kuffar are inferior, or violence in London isn't justified, but suicide bombs in Israel are a different matter, then you too are part of the problem.